Hello and welcome. Um, those of you who maybe saw the solar video might have thought, uh, <laughs> what's going on here? Um, even though um, I don't really have too much to add an issue to it, I thought uh, I might do it for the perspective of maybe doing a bit of lunar astronomy. So I've just literally connected the camera in, it's in the telescope, and I'm now going to be doing some lunar astronomy at the minute. Uh, just disconnect the camera. Um, just, just, just for argument's sake, reconnect, live view, and ta-da, there is the moon. Grossly overexposed, let's sort that out. Um, I'm going to go to an ISO of 100, and I think I'm going to probably go down to... Um, around, oh, check if we need to use the mouse pad. One thirteenth of a sec, there we go, and that's a bit better. So, nice little view of the moon there. And I'm going to just pull that into view slightly. Contrary to last time, I've got a reasonably decent drive on this, so even though there's a bit of um, drift, it's not as bad as it was where we we're looking at the sun in the previous video. So, there we have it, that's the moon using this. Now, what I'm going to do is we can obviously choose to shoot and take a picture of that and that's with the preview on so that's the live that we've seen or well, not live it's a, an image that we've taken so um, I'm going to go back to live view again and there we are actually it's a bit behind me preview on let's go to preview back off There we are, and then go for live view, and there it's for some reason gone back to defaulted back. We'll have to find out why that is, but um, yeah, obviously clearly it should have returned back to what we'd selected earlier on, but no, no matter. This is a training video, and I'm sure that developers will be looking at that to sort for future reference. So what you can do from here as well, is you can zoom in on features for finer tuning, finer f um, focusing. Obviously this is live so things don't always go quite as we expect. I don't think the seeing spot on yet either, it's still quite early here in the evening. But there we are, so we've got that quite well. I'm just going to bump that back up because I'm going to take a photograph of it. This is shooting using the same 1000D Canon that you saw me using in another video. I'm just going to get that back into play. That's better. So that's our moon, and I'm now going to go and image that. So I'm going to go into tools, and I'm going to go into planetary. And much the same as you saw last time, I'm going to grab me five shots of that. So I'm going to click on five, and that's taking five shots in sequence of the moon there. And of course, just as you saw before, we can flip that horizontal, <laughs> we can flip vertical, so if you're a bit puzzled by the view you can flip it, go negative, Whee! look at that, and go sharp, which uh, works nicely, LV stack, which oop, oop, you don't want to be doing too much of that I don't think here. And obviously you can adjust brightness from here as well, uh, which probably you won't need to do so much for the moon. So we'll get that back down to normal. We can rotate clockwise, that's pretty cool, doesn't it? So um, you can rotate that, and I'm going to take another shot of that as well. There we go. And the images, of course, as usual, saved in there. So this is just straightforward standard um, using the software to take lunar photos. Uh, much the same as you saw with the sun earlier on. So if we come down, of course, obviously, I'll just double put back and say you can just shoot from the top. I think I've covered that already anyway. If I minimize this down, let's see what we've got. I'm putting all my images into here. Aha, uh -huh, good, I didn't populate that. Go to the camera. And there's the folder. So it creates a folder pretty much for the shots. 
so that's the maybe a bit overexposed for my liking but it's difficult to to get that right in some cases I do like what it's done down here though and um, that was from another project into live view we're looking at 2046 which is about where we are these are a bit nicer these are what we've just taken the series of five shots well this is what it's uh, put in the folder so quite handy that if um, you want to take a few shots for um, stacking purposes I mean I only chose five but obviously if you come back and see you could choose to take a whole lot more than that so um, go back into planetary this is where that came from so you can even push that up to ten if you want and you can uh, take that many shots so I'm quite looking forward to trying that for um, deep sky work especially with M42 because if you're going to be using um, deep sky stacker um, that's handy for that purpose but there you go I um, just wanted to clarify a bit more of what we can do with the software it's a bit kind of um, chaotic uh, looking at the sun um, but here we are a lot more quiet plus it's a, a far better drive on, on the um, telescope as well on, on this one using my LX10 so there we have it um, I don't, I've just gone back to live view I'm going to put that down to 120 per second. There we go. There. So you've seen now um, a bit more of the software um, in its in its glory. Um, going to be doing another one shortly where you'll be able to see the actual how to use this software for focusing and to actually run a plan on how to set up an imaging schedule which we'll be here hopefully covering in the next video so until then I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for watching